Good afternoon and good evening. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Jie Hongmo. In this presentation, I will discuss enhancing the debugging ability for harm. This method can effectively apply to harm in general, extending its benefits beyond the scope of Qscape alone. Therefore, I will introduce this idea in the presentation and use Qscape as an example to illustrate its practical implications. Before that, I will introduce myself first. My name is Jie Hong Mo, and I will move Mamder's master's student currently studying at Aldo University in Finland, and I will continue my studies at Ericon in France next semester. This is me, and this is my GitHub and LinkedIn. Then let's move on to the first part. What is Qscape? Qscape is an open source security tool specialized developed for Kubernetes. It serves as an early detection system that can help identify security risks, compliance violations, and misconfigurations within Kubernetes clusters. By using Qscape, organizations can proactively address security concerns and reduce the risks of potential breaches. It is worth to mention that Qscape is a sandbox for Cloud Native Computing Foundation now. Here is the content of the presentation. First, we will discuss about the existing problem. Then, I will show my solutions to the problem. In the end, the conclusion will be given. Let's focus on the existing problem. As we mentioned above, Qscape can scan misconfigurations in, hum, in Q, Kubernetes, which included harm chart. However, harm does not give information about which output line is coming from which input line. We take this as an example. We can see harm chart use template file and value file to get the rendered file. But after rendering, the results file only provides which source file comes from without telling the output line is coming from which input line in original template file. So it caused the problem in Qscape. The information can create the correlations between the source and output. So for Qscape, there's no backend connection to the original source file after the chops were templated. More than that, Qscape cannot use it to produce correct faces for harm charts. To deal with this problem, we need to link the output with the original line in template file. To achieve that, the feature of comments is used. In harm charts, if we add the comment on the template file, it will be remade after rendered. Therefore, if we can add the line numbered information in the comments, then we can get the line information in the rendered file. More than that, we can add more information for each line to form a mapping node. For example, here we can get the field, which is the path of YAM file. We can also get the values of line 20 and line number template file. More than that, we can also get the API version and kind for harm chart information. So for one line, we can get so many informations here. But the problem is, how can we generate the mapping node for each line? Here are two methods I have tried. First, I use regular expression to get the mapping node. Second, I use yum package to get the mapping node. They, they have similar, similar steps here. First, for the first one, it defines the pattern, extract the field, and fill a mapping node. For the second one, it uses the package to calculate the field, extract the field, then fill a mapping node. Maybe we can all notice that the difference is how they how to calculate the field here. After comparison, I choose the second one as my final result. Since 
final solutions. Since for the first one, we need to define the patterns manually. And there are many possibilities for YAM files uh, for the patterns. So if I miss one, it will cause the bug. More than that, if we define the patterns in the code, like there will be a lot of workload. So in the end, to simplify, I choose package to calculate the field. And now I can just calculate it directly. But the problem is, but like the second one is much slower than the first one. For the final solution, it can divide it to two parts. First, get the mapping node, then apply it to Qscape. For the first one, there are four steps. First, add comments to template file. Then, vendor harm chart. After that, get the mapping node of the vendor template file. In the end, delete the comments on the vendor template file. For the first part, get the mapping node of the vendor template file is the most important part. And it is also the part I will like this, like explain it detailed in the demo time. Then after that, we just need to use it to calculate the output line of harm charts type file, then use it to form the fixed objects. Let's move on to the demo time. I will show you how I use the RikuLib package to get the mapping node. Before telling the wheel function of the before telling the function, I will introduce the structure I used here first. As I mentioned above, for each line, it can has one mapping node here, and it includes the object ID, field, value, template file name, template line number. Then, here we define the template node. For one template, it can have several nodes. So this one represents a template here and it includes like several lines, several nodes. And for one file, it can have several templates. So we use a sequence, a uh, advert to represent it. This is represents a file. Then after knowing the structure we use here, let's move on to the real function I used here. This is the most important function I use. And it uses file name and file contents as input. The file mapping is the output here. For each file for each file, first we split the file contents to lines. Then we range the lines to possess the file. We use three dashes here to like to separate the template. For each template, we will check if the API version and kind is here. If one of them is lost, which means that the YAML file is correct or wrong, it's not correct or, and or wrong, now we will just skip it. Otherwise, we will continue the process. This function is the function we call the YAML package to process the to process the file contents. And here is the real function. Like we define the encoder and decoder of YAML, then the stream elevator. In the elevator, we evaluate it. We impose the file contents, the encoder and decoder. But actually, we use the expression to define we will only process the which line of the file and then it will tell the output of the file. It defines the output of each line. Like it will tell the density path and the type and also the value. Then I will use an example to show you what is the output looks like. Here it tells the output of the YAM package. Like 
here is this we have the density path and it also has the type and also the value for one output it can have different like for one output it can have different type so we divide it to three types first is the map type and also the sequence type and also the not map type then what's the difference between like between them among them for the map type is like they it doesn't has the values and in the opposite for the stream type it will have definitely have the values and the difference is the sequence type the sequence type is like this is one sequence type example for yama file we can use this one dash and space to means the sequence here so for sequence type it represents the sequence Okay, after seeing the outputs, what the outputs looks like, let's go back to the function. Like here we know that like what is the output looks like in this one. Then we go back to process the output. We get the output here and for the output we can get the path and we did we check that this path is empty or not. If it is empty, it means that like for each, for this line, there is no any important information. So we will just skip it. Otherwise, we will like, as we mentioned above, like for one result, we have like for one output, it have many small outputs inside. We use this to split it. Then we use this function to process the uh, the each small output. So for each small output, first we will check if it is map type or not. Like only if it is a map type, then we use the map type. We shows that this is a map type. We set it as true and use the map type to perceive it. If this is not, it means that it's the sequence or streams type here. Then we can get the value of the of the result we use this function and set it as false to process it so in the end we will wise the nodes to the mapping node then we append the mapping nodes to file mapping so for file mappings it can contain several roads mapping nodes in then we just output the file mappings in output the file mapping Okay, after the demo time, let's move on to the result. Here are two results. First, with the mapping node or file node, Qscape can give correct locations to the rendered file by home chart. Then, with the mapping nodes, Qscape can provide automatic fixes to the rendered file by home chart. Here I will use a GitHub action to show the result. Now I will take this workflow to show how I use how like to show the result of my of my program. So here I define a Qscape scam as the, the workflow to show the result. You can see there are several steps here, but basically it is the same as the one of the Qscape GitHub action. The only difference is like I changed to the GitHub action here to mine. So it will use my own image instead of the uh, Qscape. We can check this step. It will shows the it will shows how it runs my my function like this one you can see this is the one same as in my function so it selects the line free and gets the results and process it so the the last do the similar things 
Then after that, we can get the results here. Um, we output the result side feed. Uh, why we use the side feed format? Because for five side feed, it can like create the result and just upload it to GitHub Action Security, so we can check it in security directly. So basically, what I change is on the results part of the report. So here, it shows the which kind of policy and index, and this is the test. So it will also tell us the, um, here is what I add, like the mapping nodes can help. It's like it can tell the accurate star line and also the accurate columns here. More than that, it will also add the faces for this one. So for the faces, it shows that it is um, like here the where the problem is. Then it shows where I have to change it. For it's like for this line, I have to insert this one. Tags like namespace and my namespace. So this is my changes to home chart for Cubescape. Like the first is like adding the location, then the second one is like adding the physics object here. Um it can also show in the security. So for this one you can see here it's like it only has the uh, now it only has the uh, has the uh, where the the location the location is like I haven't can I'm still doing the part like showing it the physics in this one but still we can see it works it tells like where the problem is so yeah this is the demo. After the demo time, let's go to the conclusion. My solution effectively bridges the gap in Qscape's automatic fix capabilities for harm charts and provides a workflow to generate accurate fixes. Furthermore, my solution is not just limited to Qscape. It essentially improves the debugging abilities for harm charts, which makes it versatile, versatile for solving similar problems. In the end, I have to say, I have gained valuable knowledge here, and I'm afraid that I can contribute to the advancement of Kubernetes security practice. Based on my experience, I highly recommend individuals who are passionate about enhancing Kubernetes security to join our community. Together, we can continue to learn, grow, and make a meaningful impact together in the realm of Kubernetes security. Thank you.